today we are going to start the topic that is uh, pericardium and heart so first we'll check out uh, what the pericardium is made up of so you can see this is a pericardium which is made up of mainly the fibrous layer and a serous layer so serous layer is actually an outer layer and it is in turn divided into the parietal serous layer and the visceral layer which is also called as uh, epicardium or serous visceral layer so actually the serous layer is an inner layer sorry not the outer layer whereas the fibrous layer is a outer layer so fibrous layer is also called as fibrous pericardium serous layer is called as serous pericardium it is divided into visceral layer or epicardium parietal layer or parietal serous ep, uh, pericardium so actually what is pericardium pericardium is a fibro serous sac because it's made up of this layers like fibrous layer and serous layer so it is called as fibro serous sac and mainly it encloses the heart and also some great vessels like pulmonary trunk aorta so those all great vessels and heart are enclosed in a fibro serous sac now we will see the diagram and understand so here you can see this is a uh, heart for example this is a heart so this is aorta so still it's in a developing stage so now we'll see the layers of pericardium here so the outermost layer which we are seeing the black color one that is the fibrous pericardium whereas the serous layer as i said the fibrous layer is outward whereas the serous layer is divided inter into two layers that is the parietal serous layer and visceral serous layer so you can see this is a parietal serous layer this is also connecting this is attaching to the fibrous pericardium so outer is fibrous pericardium to that fibrous pericardium only the parietal layer of serous pericardium is also attaching and so this completes the outer layer whereas coming to the inner layer you can see which is intact to the heart means it is completely uh, attaching to the heart that layer is the visceral layer or also called as epicardium so these are the two layers and the space in between these two layers is called a main pericardial cavity which is actually a potential space it's not a false space it's a true potential space and here you can see this white color one is a heart muscle and this <coughs> inferior surface of the pericardial cavity is in contact with the diaphragm so this we need to understand now here you can see during heart development it invaginates into serous sac and so at the beginning mainly during the heart development it invaginates into the serous sac you know serous sac is a uh, inner layer means the next layer first one is a fibrous layer second one is a serous layer so during the heart development it invaginates into serous sac and later it enters into the atria so how it is invaginating the fall i will show later we'll complete first this theory part so parietal serous pericardium is adherent to the inner surface of fibrous pericardium so what it means is the parietal serous pericardium is a sticking to the inner surface of fibrous pericardium whereas the visceral layer of serous pericardium is adherent to the outer layer of heart and it is forming also epicardium so what we have seen here we'll check in the diagram so you can see here during heart development this is the developing heart in the beginning it is mainly invaginating into the serous sac this is the serous sac so it invaginates like this and later at last it enters the atria so still you can see the outer fibrous pericardium is present and this is a pericardial cavity inside so this is the visceral layer which is fused with the heart you know visceral layer is fused with the heart whereas the parietal layer is outward and the gap between them is forming a pericardial cavity so in this diagram as i said before the fibrous pericardium is sticking with the parietal layer of serous pericardium mainly this parietal layer of serous pericardium sticks in the deep surface of fibrous pericardium and they both are lining outside whereas the visceral layer or epicardium is lining the heart now we'll talk in detail about fibrous pericardium so fibrous pericardium is a conical sac and it has an apex which is blunt at the level of sternal angle and it is fused with the roots of great vessels and also with pretracheal fascia whereas the base of the fibrous pericardium is broad and it is blending with the central tendon of diaphragm and we also have the weak superior and inferior sternopericardial ligaments which are connecting the anterior surface to the upper and lower ends of 
body of sternum so that is what uh, by means of uh, this sternopericardial ligament the anterior surface of the fibrous layer is attached to the lower end of body of sternum and the posteriorly we will have the principal bronchi esophagus with its nerve plexus and also we have the descending thoracic iota and on each side this fibrous pericardium is related to the mediastinal pleura and also the mediastinal surface of lungs and also to the phrenic nerve to the pericardiophrenic vessels and this fibrous pericardium is protecting the heart against the sudden overfilling so this all points which i have discussed now will understand by means of a diagram so we can see here this is the fibrous pericardium about this we are now talking in detail so this is a conical sac and you can see this is the apex which is blunt and it is at the level of sternal angle that is nothing but in the rib number 2 and it is getting fused with the roots of some great vessels and also pretracheal fascia next coming to its base the base of fibrous pericardium is broad and it is blending with the central tendon you can see this is the central tendon of the diaphragm according to the diagram in the diagram and also we have the weak superior and inferior sternopericardial ligament which is connecting you can see this is the anterior side which is connecting the anterior side to the upper and lower ends of body of sternum so to the body of sternum this anterior side is getting attached because you know this pericardium and heart are mainly present in the inferior mediastinum middle part so in the anterior mediastinum you know we'll have the sternopericardial ligament right so in the name itself only can understand sternopericardial means connecting the pericardium to the sternum especially to the lower end of body of sternum and so to this uh, uh, pericardium that is especially the fibrous pericardium posteriorly if you'll see the posterior side you'll have some principal bronchi also you'll have the esophagus with its nerve plexus and also you'll have the descending thoracic iota and on each side you will see means from this side this is a medial side right so on its each side you will see the mediastinal pleura mediastinal surface of lungs phrenic nerve also you will see the pericardiophrenic vessels so these are all of course on the medial side because on medial side only phrenic nerve is passing passing on medial side only the pericardiophrenic vessels will pass and all this this fibrous pericardium is major the major work is to protect the heart against sudden overfill now we will see the serous pericardium so serous pericardium is very thin it's a double layered and it's mainly lined by mesothelium because we know serous pericardium is in turn divided into you can see the parietal serous layer and the visceral serous layer and it is mainly lined by the mesothelium so the pericardial cavity is actually a potential space with mainly the serous fluid to lubricate the apoes surfaces and also to allow the heart to beat smoothly so mainly this pericardial fluid is between two layers uh, that is the serous layer and fibrous layer and mainly helping to lubricate those two surfaces so that the heart can beat very smoothly now we will check out what are the contents of pericardium so you can understand what are present in the peri- inside the pericardium so pericardium is just like a surf- uh, layer which is surrounding whole of the heart of course all the structures which are present uh, in the heart will be inside the sinus of uh, peri- that is the content of pericardium so of course the main one is heart and also you have the cardiac vessels like cardiac arteries veins and also you will have the nerves which are related to the heart and of course the major great art uh, vessels like ascending aorta pulmonary trunk lower half of superior vena cava will be present and also the terminal part of inferior vena cava you know superior vena cava inferior vena cava open to open into the right atrium so this sides and also we have the terminal parts of pulmonary veins which are opening into the left atrium so all these are the main contents of the pericardium so we'll have the heart and its related vessels and also we'll have the major structures which are related to the heart now we will check out what are the sinuses of pericardium so epicardium you know epicardium is a vis- nothing but the visceral layer which is in contact with the heart so this epicardium at the root of great vessels are forming two tubes so this one also again we, i will show the diagram and explain it so what are those two tubes mainly the epicardium at the great vessels forming two tubes one is the arterial tube and other one is the venous tube so the arterial tube is mainly the ascending aorta and pulmonary trunk whereas the venous tube is mainly the vena cava and the pulmonary veins 
so the passage between these two tubes is called transverse sinus so between this arterial tube and venous tube will have a sinus that is called as transverse sinus and during the heart development all veins are crowded actually in the beginning of heart development all the veins are crowded but later they form a sinus that is called as oblique sinus so till now we have seen the two sinus one is the transverse sinus between the arterial tube and venous tube and also have the oblique sinus so which is also called cul de sac which is posterior to the left atrium so remember the oblique sinus is posterior to the left atrium so all this i'll show the diagram it will be very easily conformed to you so now we'll see the diagram so you can see here these are the sinuses of the heart mainly we have a transverse sinus and the oblique sinus so what we are saying uh, this sinus especially the epicardium at the great roots uh, great vessels forming two tubes so one is the arterial tube this is the arterial tube and the other one is a venous tube so the arterial tube is mainly having the ascending aorta so you can see this is the ascending aorta this red one is ascending aorta this blue one is a pulmonary trunk so ascending aorta pulmonary trunk form the arterial tube in the venous tube this is a venous tube which is formed by vena cava that is the superior vena cava and inferior vena cava and also the four pulmonary veins so this is forming a venous tube so the sinus between the arterial tube and the venous tube is called as transverse sinus this black arrow is representing the transverse sinus so mainly during the heart development all these veins are crowded but later they form a middle sinus in between the pulmonary veins this sinus is called as narrow oblique sinus which is also called cul de sac and this is posterior to the left atrium so in this diagram you will see that this oblique sinus is this posterior to the left atrium because this is the left atrium the posterior to left atrium you will have the oblique sinus so now we will see the transverse sinus is horizontal and anterior to the transverse sinus you will have ascending aorta pulmonary trunk so posterior to the transverse sinus you will have the superior vena cava and inferiorly you will have the left atrium so we'll see the transverse sinus so as i said it's a horizontal sinus and anterior to it you'll have the ascending aorta and also pulmonary trunk posterior to it you'll have the superior vena cava and inferiorly you'll have the left atrium so here you can see this is a transverse sinus inferiorly you'll have the this is a left atrium so next we have the oblique sinus the oblique sinus is a narrow gap which is behind the heart so back to the heart you have a oblique sinus so anteriorly of course you will have the left atrium posteriorly you will have the parietal pericardium and right and left sides to the oblique sinus is mainly formed by pericardial reflections and below and to the left opens into the rest of the pericardial cavity so why this oblique sinus is present mainly to permit the pulsation of left atrium to take place freely so mainly when the left atrium is pulsating to provide the space for the left atrium to pulsate freely it is mainly formed by oblique sinus so we'll check out the oblique sinus now so we know this is the oblique sinus so to the oblique sinus uh, we have anteriorly the left atrium so it's better to see it from here so this is the oblique sinus anteriorly you see this is the left atrium and posteriorly you have the parietal pericardium because this is a parietal pericardium and right and left sides so right and left sides is mainly formed by pericardium reflections and below and left opens into the rest of the pericardium cavity so now we will see the arterial supply of this pericardium so the arterial supply is mainly by fibrous and parietal pericardia so the parietal and fibrous pericardia is supplied by branches from internal thoracic artery musculophrenic artery and descending thoracic aorta so only about we are talking about the fibrous and parietal pericardia fibrous means the outer layer the outer layer is mainly and the, also the parietal pericardia is mainly supplied by internal thoracic artery musculophrenic artery and also the descending thoracic aorta now we will see the nerve supply so what nerve is supplying the fibrous and parietal pericardia is our phrenic nerve so the arteries are internal thoracic musculophrenic descending thoracic aorta the nerve supply is phrenic nerve 
and as it is supplied by phrenic now it's somewhat sensitive to pain so whenever i say that any pain in a pleural cavity oh, sorry pericardial cavity that is mainly due to the phrenic now means that area especially the fibrous and parietal pericardia are sensitive to pain next we will see the epicardium epicardium is mainly supplied by autonomic nerves of heart so mainly the autonomic nerves supply the epicardium epicardium is nothing but the visceral layer which is intact to the heart so this is the outer layer this is the inner layer so the outer layer layer is sensitive to pain the inner layer is not sensitive to pain because it is supplied by autonomic nerves so if it is supplied by phrenic nerve that is the outer layer it is sensitive to pain epicardium inner layer surrounding the heart not sensitive to pain so the pain of pericarditis mainly originate in the parietal pericardium but not in the visceral pericardium or epicardium because the pain is only seen in the parietal pericardium so the cardiac pain or angina originates in the cardiac muscles or also sometimes in the vessels of the heart so this you need to remember in the case of pericarditis it is in parietal pericardium in the case of cardiac pain or angina it is originating in the cardiac muscle or vessels of heart so by this we have completed the pericardium and heart next we will see the heart in detail and we will divide it into three parts in three videos so this is first part which is completed that is pericardium